And speaking of VP picks, we are joined tonight by Sarah Palin, only the second woman ever in the U.S. nominated as a vice presidential candidate and also former governor of Alaska. Thanks so much for your time and for joining us tonight, Governor. Thank you so much. So first off, what did you think of Joe Biden's commitment to picking a female running mate? Well, I, personally, I want to see a female running mate. I want to see more women in office. But I think uh, Joe Biden kind of put himself in a pickle by excluding some demographics, certainly of uh, gender. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I think um, with such an important job, you want to keep the field open for the most um, capable, the most um, uh, fitting person, regardless of gender. And I don't know, I, I, I think he just automatically narrowed it down too quickly. Now, you, of course, ran with the late Senator John McCain back in 2008. Did you feel that as a woman, you faced more intense scrutiny? And, and describe what that process was like. Heck yeah. Women, yes, women face so much more scrutiny. Um, you know, in, in a lot of sense, it was a lot about looks, you know, the physicality involved in serving in public office, which was ridiculous to me. Um, whereas men, even today, um, aren't under that kind of microscope. And also, um, I think women, mothers, um, are kind of scrutinized also, much more so than a male candidate um, when it comes to family and children. And I was asked so often, how are you gonna do this with children? And granted, I just had a baby, but um, and another son who was heading off to war and my daughter, teenage daughter who was pregnant, you know, yeah, we, we, we had kind of some typical family issues going on. But I was asked so much about that. I think the rollout of the campaign itself was pretty screwed up because people weren't able to know my accomplishments, who I was, my experience, what I stood for, what I could add to the ticket. And instead, the rollout of the campaign kind of just went along with media, letting it be more about uh, personality and um, uh, j just the personal aspects of um, who I was instead of what I represented. And I don't know, I, I think women just kind of inherently have gone through that more than men. Knowing what you know now, would you do it all over again? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. I would have gone rogue a lot earlier, though. I would have fought back uh, against those who were running the campaign who, you know, weren't in touch with the American people and what the American people wanted. But yeah, I do it again in a heartbeat and I want to do it again. I want to be back in there in public service. You want to get back into the political arena. OK, I just want to get a sense. Political party aside, as a member of this elite group of women, what advice would you have for the woman who Joe Biden ultimately picks? Uh, that, that woman has really got to be strong and be uh, vocal when it comes to those trying to shape them, mold them, mail them, tell them what to say. That person, if, if they have that confidence that they're in it for the right reasons, they need to speak up and make sure that campaign managers who really, uh, a lot of them, you know, they're in it for um, a, a season, not a reason. It's a business for them. For them to try to shape the candidate into something that they believe would connect with the public when that candidate herself knows that's not quite right. That candidate had better be strong and stand up for what she knows is right. And, and so you say that you'd like to get back into politics. What kind of uh, ballot might we see your name on? Well, I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, but, uh, you know, it, if I am back in office, I've certainly learned a lot in this last decade. And that is even more of this connectivity with the American people and what it is that they expect from their government. I have um, certainly learned a lot about politics and how ridiculous so much of the political arena is. So much of the shenanigans and the corruption. Um, I would be more adamant than ever to clean things up. Now, there have been a record number of Republican women running for Congress this year. Some call it the year of the woman for the GOP. Why is that, do you think? And what does it say about the direction of your party with or without Trump at the helm? Well, it was also deemed the year of the woman um, back in, I think, 2012 and then 2014. I think, I think we, we always say that whenever there are more female candidates. And it, again, I'm glad. Um, I, like I said, personally, I want to see more women in office. Um, but more than that, I want to see more good people in office, um, regardless of gender. I think a lot of women, though, have seen that, um, yeah, you can actually keep on 
striving for a good education and raising a family and working and having a career and run for political office at the same time. Perhaps years ago, um, women were made to feel that they couldn't do both or all. And um, I think um, through candidacies of women whom today's women are standing on their shoulders, um, I think that women today can see that, yeah, women are capable, we can do a lot. Would you say that the Republican Party has changed drastically since you are actually running for vice president? Uh, you know, the tennis of the party, no, because, um, it, you know, we, we have a platform that is strong, it's solid, it's common sense, it's all about um, uh, uh, work ethic and expectation for reward for work ethic and freedoms that um, America was built upon, you know, all those things that make up the platform that still stands um as for the people kind of coming and going certainly that's changed go back to the again to the mccain campaign those who are running the republican tickets campaign are the big liberals today they're they're the voices that you hear on msnbc at night they're the ones um uh, opposing those common sense conservative issues that uh, do make up um, such importance in the republican party so as for the personalities, a lot has changed over the last decade. But those who are standing strong and standing true, we haven't changed. <laughs> Let's turn now to coronavirus for a moment. You were once governor. You have the unique perspective and understanding of protecting your citizens on both health and economic fronts. The federal government has largely left it up to the states. Do you think that the Trump administration's response has been adequate? I think we need to be consistent in uh, respecting states' rights. Yes, you know, so often we say, hey, federal government shouldn't be involved in that issue. It's a state's issue, it's a local issue. Um, so uh, in that vein, yes, I want to see more empowerment for the states to make their own decisions. However, with the federal government though, in um, being in existence for public safety, you know, the federal government is here for our safety, for our national defense. Um, and really wasn't created to do a whole lot of other things except to protect our rights. Uh, well, the coronavirus and these issues that are of such import certainly fall under that um, purview, right? The public safety. So with the federal government's involvement uh, that is necessary, this is a good lesson for all politicians and bureaucrats to say for a rainy day. If you were still governor of Alaska, would you mandate that your citizens wear masks? I would not mandate it. No, no. I'm, um, you know, again, a freedom loving gal. And uh, no, I want to make sure, though, that people have enough common sense and um, compassion for your fellow man and make wise decisions yourself. I would lead by example. And um, no, I would not mandate, though. I, in fact, as governor, mm, you know, I, I pull back on mandating and dictating much of anything because you have to trust the wisdom of the people. Again, leadership leading by example. That's pretty much key though. I'm gonna ask you for a moment to pull out your crystal ball here. How long do you think until we have our first female president? I hope it's not too long. I I just, I'm, I'm excited for that personally, you know, and um, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. I the American public, it's, they're cool with it, I guarantee. You know, sometimes we hear, oh, America's not ready for that quite yet. Yeah, we are. Yes, 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 America's, we're ready for it. Really, uh, Americans, for the most part, we're not gonna put gender or race or religion or dem different aspects of demographics in front of the fact that we need the best person in the role of president. So America's ready for a woman president. Governor Palin, we thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me. And when we come back, I can't breathe those haunting words once again captured on video, this time from inside a jail. The charges filed and the apology from a sheriff tonight. 